Welcome to Strategy About Gamers to another GBHL YouTube video. You have your host GBHL Tom and GBHL Damien, and we are here piggybacking on the end of James, GBHL James, and GBHL Jamie's um, Fallen Realms week. We're the um, sequel that no one wanted. Yes, um, we decided it might be fun to do an unboxing um, because we were uber efficient at getting out um, the Plantier content. Yeah, we, <laughs> as opposed to being normally stressed yeah. at the end of the Plantier night, we're like, ah, oh, it's early. Yeah. Do something else. So uh, we have more content for you guys, which um, hopefully you'll appreciate. Um, so, um, for those of you who haven't got the Fallen Realms book, um, try to get it as soon as possible because it's going out of print. Um, yeah. Hopefully, um, they'll make them into ebooks or something equivalent at some point. Um, we have been in discussions with Games Workshop about that. Really? Um, yes, but um, we shall see what they do. Um, Okay, so if you are going to pick anyone to unbox from the Fallen Realms book, who would it be? We Me? can't. We, yeah. Oh, I wasn't. well, we can't do the what? Feral Urukai. <laughs> I was gonna. I was gonna do the whole. Can you guess what it is yet? But it's you in know the what description. It is, yeah. It's in the description. There's no tension. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. We need to have unboxing. Watch it and see. Yes, we should do that. We haven't said, oh, do you want me to do that? Do you want the card to be super secret? Super mystery? secret. <laughs> Fallen Realms yeah. unboxing. Unbagging. Yeah? yeah? Should we do that? Yeah. All right, I, okay. I like that you're hearing this yeah. <laughs> when you already know this. So yes, we have decided it is a mystery, <laughs> so you don't know what you're watching, yeah? Um, one thing. Yes, you're allowed one thing to unbox. If Feral Urukai. Berserkers. Crossbowmen. <laughs> Saruman Nano. No. No? All um, those. All those. I don't know, Thomas. What would it be? We. Oui. I'm going to unbox, if I can find, <laughs> this is pre-planned. Heffalumps? Indeed, elephants. A war mimic. A war mimic of Harrod. Now, before you sue us, yes. um, we have to specify for the record, this is not an unboxing, technically. No. It is... An unbagging. <laughs> an unbagging. We've done an unbagging before. We have, for the water. 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 Um, so yeah, this, this is, is my mummock. So we thought that, um, so the mummock's what, still one of um, Lord of the Rings Rangers bestsellers. It's is always it? in the, um, the the bestseller range that they, they pop up mm. around just before Christmas. They'll they'll flag the mummock and things like that. Oh really? Yeah. They'll flag it? Yeah, they'll flag it, yeah. What was that? As in, advertise it and say, these are the kind of gifts you... Oh, you okay, gift ideas. Yes. The expensive stuff. Well, yeah, but I think that it must do all right for them to bother pushing that one. I remember when it came out, um, it was their biggest model ever at the time. Mm. Um, and it came out after Return of the King, yeah, which the, a lot of people forget the about. Yeah, the Yeah, the Pelinor Supplement. Because, yeah. again, for the same reason we've talked about loads of digital stuff, they, they didn't know what they were going to look like yeah. um, before Return of the King. So Return of the King, you go and look at the Return of the King book, yeah. it's actually quite dull. Yeah. It's kind of Warriors of Minas Tirith yeah. against Mordor. There's orcs. a troll, but it's quite funny in the White Dwarf Bat Rep, because obviously they had to do the White Dwarf Bat Rep before the kind of cut off for when you're allowed certain things released. Yeah. They had a cave troll instead of a Mordor troll. Oh, really? Because they weren't allowed to show pictures of a Mordor troll. Ah, I didn't know that before then. Cool little um, tidbit there. Yes. So, yeah, um, this is the Warmoth, and we thought we'd have a look at it. Yeah, and. Uh, because it's so big, I don't think people really, unless you've got one yourselves, don't really see this that often in its screw form. No. Um, plastic, which is nice. Yes. So, where should we start? Should we start Place. with the guys? Okay, with the guys. If they do come with yes. it? Yes. So, with it, you get a sprue of blurry Haradmen. <laughs> you get a sprue of Haradrim warriors. Yep. Now, this is exactly the same as the yes. sprue in the box. So, um, the way that they. Um, split it is six Spearmen and six Bowmen. Indeed. And they're cool models. You've probably yeah. seen these all over the place. They're nice. But they're quite nice models. Six Spears and six Bows. Yes. Which is presumably why uh, Harad armies can have... 50% Bow women. Yeah, because that decision was made by um, Sprues, wasn't yes. it? Yes. So cool models. Do we like the Harad models? Yes. I, th I think they're great models. And also, economically... This is now, how much is the moon now? Is it 50 quid? Uh, I think 62 50. 62, because the, these are 15 quid now. Yeah. So, let's not say you don't know you're getting them, but that's quite cool. Yeah. But they're pretty dull. They're yeah. just harad But you do get one more. One more what? Oh, there's another dude, isn't there? Yeah. 
uh, little instruction book, set of instructions. I should probably explain why it's in a bag. I won this on eBay um, a good couple of years ago. Um, and it had been opened and I got it for £28, which I was very chuffed with. Um, my Mimic box still exists. It's in my dad's garage, he uses it to store things in. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you've, you've made one of these, haven't you? you yes, I've made them painted one. Now this is the base, which is mm. really cool. I think that's coming up quite well. Yeah, so there's a full-on sculpted base here, um, with lots of dead horses and dead warriors. And what's the trivia about this base? Uh, it has... Um, the Perry Twins sculpture. Yeah, isn't Alessio on here as well? Yes, I think so. So supposedly on this base, I'm not sure exactly which ones they are, Yeah. but That's Alessio... I think... Is that Alessio? I think he's got the chainmail helmet on. So we think that this guy here is Alessio Cavatore. Comment below. <laughs> who is, um, for those of you who don't know, um, he took over as Lord of the Rings kind of rules writer yes. for a while. He didn't write the original rules, but he wrote, I think he wrote the Return of the King yes. set. And, and the one rule book. And if so you can't, yeah. Um, if you if you remind me in the comments, um, I can give you the number of the white dwarf that for those that were just before a release. So before Return of the King, um, a white dwarf was released talking about the new rules that were coming out by Alessio, and Alessio wrote about six pages on the changes. Oh, why cool. He made them. Yeah. So. That's and a really cool white dwarf. Supposedly two of these guys as well are the Perry Twins who sculpted a lot of the range. And I Including think this. Um, this is a tribute. If you have a look at this. See this guy's had his arm cut off. Um, yes. I can't remember where, I think it's Alan Perry. Yeah. Um, had one of his arms blown off in a reenactment accident. Yes. And I think that is a reference to that. Yes. So yeah, kind of cool little stuff. But, but a very cool they were, they were extras in The Return of the King. They were. Yeah. At that scene. So and they're in... Um, Battle of Five Armies as well. Yes. Uh, so yeah, cool base. Right, which... I don't know if I don't know what scene. I think they're in Lake Town refugees. Oh okay. Um, and that's a little project in itself. Yes. Really. Yeah, it, t it takes a while to paint that base. Mm -hmm. uh, I found the other dude. The other dude. This <coughs> is. I don't know how well that's coming up. This is the chieftain um, of the mimic. Um, so if you don't have a Mahud um, leader like the one you see in the film, these so the Mahud ones sit on the the sticky out bit at the front. I don't know really what you call it, the part of the howler that sticks out the front porch. Um, yeah, the porch. Whereas this guy sits right on the top. Okay. And um, that's where you'd place it. He's got a chicken on his head. Yes, he's got a bird-shaped helmet. Mm. Um, cool. It's a cool model. It's a cool model. But you can use it as a captain on foot if you want to. Ah, uh, very cool. Good stuff. Yep. And now we're into now we're onto the heflon the bits. So these are probably the most recognisable bits. Well, what's this then? Is this the head? <laughs> I'm just being silly. This is of course the side. Mm -hmm. um, one of the side flanks. Part too. See how that's going? Yeah. That kind of goes together like that. And you have an elephant, yeah. an oliphant. Folks, I will never believe it. No. <laughs> There you go, and it. I gotta say, it's it's awesome having this in plastic. It, when you're now used yeah. to fine cast, like having a kit this big, yeah. this kind of detail, just as a big plastic kit with just clips together. I presume you would still need to do a bit of um, green stuff in along that yeah. line, yeah. along that crack where it joins. It's got to be worth it for a kit like this. Yeah. But um, pretty big. Yeah. As you can kind of see. Let's hand next to it. This is it. Normal. Oh yeah, guy. that's a much better. So that's a normal dude. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's a big. It's pretty cool. It's obviously but, scaled down. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah. that's just makes it practical. Um, that's quite cool. Just while I'm fishing the, the next bit, you do get a single bases, which I like. Prefer I prefer them to the four that you have to cut from. Yeah. Make it do. You don't have to file them. Slightly quicker. Okay. All right. And that's probably not the best sprue to give you. <laughs> this probably follows on best. Okay. <clears throat> so this looks like... Is that the head? Yeah. Yes. So we get the um, head yep. in there, which is quite hard to tell that's the head, but that's his eye in there, and this, I presume, becomes the trunk, yes. does it? Yeah. Yes. And then that's, the, that's where the tusks go down there. Mm -hmm. so you've got that side of his head, and you have... The other side of his head? The other side of his head. Yeah. 
in there. And then all the way around it, I think those little bits there are the ears. And then you've got the insides of the legs here to join up. Mm -hmm. And then you've got a selection of what looks like the trunk and the tusks. Yes. All kind of coming in here. And the tusks look really cool on this model. And does this come with the um, chain thing? No. No? You have to do that. So there was a, there was a white article, dwarf. Yeah. yeah, there was a white dwarf. And again, I've got, I can tell people a number if they um, want to look at it and comment below. Um, it's where they had a kind of, uh, as they're doing white dwarf, a challenge for converting the Mimic mm. and doing it as well as possible. So there's one that's bellowing. And that one's shown a lot in the book pictures. It's got its head raised up instead of the down low okay. pose. Um, and then there's the one with the chain. And then later when they did the Harad book, they did even more um, mimic conversions. Cool. But the chain, I think they just got a, a, a normal one. necklace and, gl yeah. and glue it so it's in place and then just paint it. I've seen one of Army of the Dead r running up yeah, that, back that's, that trying was in to the, kill it. That was no, in which the white is really dwarf. good. Yeah. But it, they'd used Rohan warriors, plastic Rohan, because they look a bit like yeah, Army of the of Dead, just because it's a bit easier to at the time. Them. At they the were time, metal, they were metal. The detail on it's fantastic. Mm. On like the um, kind of skin, is <clears> really really good. There's a lot a lot of detail on that. That's the sort of thing that you might ex expect more from a metal or a fine cast yeah. kit. But they're bearing in mind that this is a larger scale version, so it's a bit easier. Yeah, I mean this was this is kind of this is the sort of thing that showed you where they kind of jumped ahead, I think, in some of the yeah. plastic work. Yeah. Like that's kind of led the way for the eagles and the trolls. Yeah. So I think you're going to need the, the kind of bulk of the, the body oh, back for the next piece, which is the bottom of the howler, the base of the howler, mm -hmm. which just sits on there. Presumably you'd glue that on. Yes. Some little pins in there. So it kind of sits on there yeah. like that. Yeah. Cool. This is where the Haradrim stand. And then to build up the howdah it has a um, leggy comes up here. Yeah, I like it. Three levels. Um so first bit of the howdah, um another level here. Mm -hmm. So that's another bit where they sit in. Yeah. And what are these bits? These are bits coming out to the side. There's little platforms that are off the main bulk of the um howdah. Okay. Where you can pop one archer in. Cool. Um, so yeah, and these bits here, in the corner of the sprue, these are um, the very top bit, so they're the edges to the very top platform, sure. and there's a little square of um, floor area for the <laughs> regiment at the top to top, but, uh, stand on. And this is the last one. Um, so this, this bit here is the bit that sticks out at the front, so okay. this bit at the top is the very front bit and these bits connect to the mimic or to the rest of the howler. This bit you've got a lot of struts and these are just putting bits of the platforms together. So it's the what in reality would be holding the howler up but in in the model world it's glue. These are just to look nice. Um, a couple of um, flags here in the middle if you, I don't know if you can see them very well. Um, but there to go on this um, end bit, uh, the bit that sticks out the front, I think, hanging down. Is that right? Why do they do that? I'll look at the picture. I think they do. Could be wrong. And yeah, just the last bits of the platform there. So quite a lot to this sprue. Thought it was here. No. You go on there somewhere. I thought they hung down from like there. Yeah, there you go. They are there. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Those two. Yeah, so they hang down from the, the bit that juts out at the front. Cool. Okay, so... so that's the kit. Yeah, so just to show you a picture again, I think they've got a full a full page picture in here somewhere, haven't they? If I remember, maybe that. Oh, is the one in there? Ah, yeah. Sure there was. Oh, uh, there, there, was, there was in there, and there also was in the Hobbit book as well. The big Hobbit rule book. That's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad. This there is what it, is. it looks like when you build it. Can't even get it all in. And so. <clears throat> there it is. And the kind of thing you want to recreate is what's on the back. Mm. And that's when you get some friends together and have lots of mimic. So you can actually say mimicale.
So you have them in plural form. There's a shot in the War of the Ring book of um, yeah, ten of them, aren't there? It's incredible. Some incredible pictures of what people have done with So, Mimico. for me, it's like, the first time I've had a really good look at it, but it yep. looks like it would go together fairly easily. Yeah, because it was one of the, fir the early models that I did, yeah. and I didn't find it too difficult. Because, I mean, and presumably painting-wise, it's just a lot of dry brushing. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, in terms of the grey. And even the, the reds and the woods, you can do a lot of yeah. dry brushing on this model. I imagine it would be relatively easy to make it look pretty yeah, good. Yeah, because uh, as long as you file it, I think the big thing with this is you need to get rid of those mould lines. Yeah. And use a bit of filler if you need to. Yeah. But the key thing is getting rid of the mould lines, because you're going to be dry brushing, you don't want to be picking really them up. Dry brushing shows up lines, yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the way the skin is etched into the plastic, just dry brushing will make it look really good. The tusks are the tricky bit, getting them to look nice because mm. they're less because white's always a bit different. Yeah. So I put I put this up like because it's iconic, yes. not, not because I've got a rad army. And I actually had a bit of a clear out recently. Yeah. And I've got I've had a box of twenty four Haradrim. Mm -hmm. So I decided they can go. Yeah. Because I'm and I got rid of some watches of Kana, whereas this had to stay. Yeah. Because I thought. This goes. This doesn't need a red army. This yeah. goes alongside. And you've got the ones to go on top anyway. Yeah, that's why. Do you have them. the Mahud chieftain? No, I don't. Okay. Guy to leave. Is he out of production? I assume so. Because mm. he'd be cool to pick up. Maybe he's, not. He's quite iconic, isn't he? Yeah. But, um, and he, he's cool to put on the front. Yeah. So um, I have no idea mm -hmm. when well. or if that ever happens, but I hope so because it's such a yeah. defining, cool little thing. Yeah. So well, do we see a lot of mimics? Um, we've seen we've seen a few. Dan Entwistle has brought one a couple of times, hasn't he? There's a couple in bat reps on the channel, aren't there? Yeah. Yeah, one involving Dan. Yeah. Um, someone else brought one to um, Preston. Was, yes. Because um, I played it. Who's uh, who, who brought it? I can't remember. Um, oh. But yeah, we. The, they are sporadically seen on the on the tournament scene. They're I not played three in one day once. Oh, because Rick Fryer Rick brought, Fryer brought one, one, and George Seymour brought, brought two, two, two in seven hundred fifty point two. Oh, my and it was my first two games. I played three. Yeah, and I was like, that was quite cool. So how do they work? Um, they work very differently to anything else in the game. They do. They when they charge they instantly hit whatever they um, charge into and trample them and if they kill them they can move on. So basically you use your Mimic to mow down um, troops. And tramples 4, strength 9, hit isn't it? Um, 3, but then if you give it tusk weapons it's 4, yeah. I think. Could be wrong, could be right. How many points are we talking? It's basic point cost is 275. That's a lot of goblins. So that's for the Mimic and the one commander on top, okay. not a Mahud Chieftain. You can upgrade to the Mahud Chieftain, that's um, another five goblins worth of points. Um, it has lots of upgrades, you can up give it more defence, much in the same way as you can give dragon upgrades. You often see it with the extra defence, don't you? Yes, yeah. and, with, and with the, um, the Tuss weapons mm -hmm. as well. I've also seen a very nasty, I can't remember what it is, is it throw stones? Yes, throw stones. You put the guys on the top to throw stones rocks, and, and they hit on a three plus. Exclamation mark, yeah. And then they hit with strength. They hit with the Haradrim, whoever's throwing it, um, it's their shoot value. Yeah. So if you upgrade them to the three plus Haradrim shooters. And yeah, they're strength eight or something. Yeah, so suddenly you get ten guys chucking three plus to hit um, rocks at you. Yeah, uh, strength six or something. That's strength hard. six. Yeah, yeah that's with a range of eight inches. That's really, really grim. Now the thing is, because it's eight inches from where you are on the howder, you know you're not gonna. Mm. It's only the things really around yeah. the base of the mimic. But it, because evil can shoot into combat, anything in the way of the yeah. mimic, any big heroes, you can keep dropping these rocks on them. So yeah, um, there are a lot of rules for the mimic. Not all of which we will go. Double page spread. Plus another page. That's three for that, pages that, dedicated. When when it came out, Alessio wrote an article about how how the hell do you write rules for yeah. something like this? Like that you have to make it incredibly powerful, but yeah. also beatable. Yeah. 
as it does need a whole lot of rules. So there's things like I think he did really well. Yeah, yeah, they, they're cool. I think it works well. You can't stop it with magic, can you? It's immune. It's immune to magic, and it can't be knocked down and things like that. Yeah, but you can target the one controlling it. Yeah. So you could. So the thing. This is the really odd one where you can actually get um, a wizard to command it and trample with the command. Only half movement, but you can trample. That's grim. With a command. So yeah, um, <laughs> wizards can deal with it. Um, the, the big tactic for stopping Mimic is to shove a big hero in front of it with lots of wounds and fate. Because the Mimic can only make three or four attacks. So even if the hero... It's a risk, but the hero will probably get injured but survive. Then, next turn, you can hopefully win the heroic and jump on the Mimic. The one downside to the Mimic is it only responds to heroic actions from its commander. Right. So... Once you've used the commander's might, you can no longer heroic move with mm -hmm. the mimic, and the mimic needs to go first to do well. What sort of stats has it got? Stat wise, it is. Um, so the howder, which is on top, has defense nine and five wounds. That's just because mm -hmm. if you do destroy that, then everyone um, within it will fall out. Um, and obviously, the mimic wouldn't have any commander, so it just leaves. So if you do destroy the howder, that, that would kill the mimic. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but the mimic itself. Um, movement is special with the trample. Um, fight value four, which is fairly poor. Mm. And the reason for that is to ensure that things can do well against it in combat. Um, strength nine, it's fairly good. Uh, defense seven, which you can upgrade to. Mm, is it eight or nine with the the gnarled hide? Defense eight, if you upgrade it. Um, three attacks. Um, ten wounds. Ten wounds. Not twenty though. <laughs> and courage two. Hmm. So that's why you also need the commander because every time the um, mimic takes a wound, um, it has to take a courage test, or its commander does. Whoever you can choose who takes the courage test. If you fail that courage test, then the next turn, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, the mimic will tramp, uh, stampede, and that means that the enemy player can choose where the mimic goes. And in, in terms of moving it, you pivot it, don't you? Yeah, you, you keep it on its central point and twist it and point it in one direction and then you have to move your full direction, your full movement in that one direction. Right, okay. Um, it's also a monster. Yes. And as memory serves, it can do brutal power attacks but it can't yes. barge, isn't that right? Yes, because... Um, I think they didn't want it to barge their trample. trample yeah. Yeah. So it can hurl and it can rend. Yes. Cool. Yes. But it rarely wins fights because of the fight four mm. when you're generally trying to put heroes on it. But even then, I found, even when you do get on it, it's very tough to take down. Yeah. Because with defence, does it eight or nine? And yeah, eight wounds, yeah, with the upgrade. Yeah. It's tough to do yeah. those. You know, you've got to burn your might to yeah. heroic move onto it. You probably don't have to burn your might in striking or anything, but then, yeah. you know, it's it is quite hard to get yeah, through. Sometimes you can just the whole contain it, keep containing it, stop it from charging. Yeah. And then hopefully it stampedes and you just send it the other way. My um, I remember in the game against George, uh, the most glorious moment was when I think I'd got it down to I'd done four wounds on yeah. it on one of them, and in one of these combats I charged in and thrived and charged in. And he was on his horse, so he does get the extra attack, yeah. but he doesn't get the knockdown. Yeah. So he had three attacks, and I won the fight because Vrasku was in it. So yeah. Vrasku's fight won it for me, and I was with all the ferals and berserkers, I was guaranteed to win it. So yeah. thrived and pierced and struck, yeah. and went two-handed. Yeah. He rolled a five for his pierced and strike, yeah. so he goes up to strength eight, and it was defense eight. So he needs fours to wound, um, strength eight, defense eight. He got yeah. plus one for being... Um, Two handed, so, three. so threes to wound a mimic, and he had his three attacks, and he rolled something like a five, four, two. Yeah. So I used a point of light to make three wounds, which, which because it was Thryden, <laughs> doubled to six wounds and killed it. Thryden What's... did six wounds he on is a mimic, mimic in one go. He is a mimic. He yeah. was Thryden mimic bane. But then, ironically, when the second mimic came over, Thryden failed his terror test and yeah. didn't charge it. <laughs> That was great. <laughs> yeah, mimic. The mimic is good fun. It, it's better in larger point value games where it's yeah. got stuff to 
it, it's really fun if you play a big points game where the mimic will smash through one line but then turn around and destroy your own line at the yeah. same time. Again, you, you kind of you don't want to. I kind of want to say that you want it to be in a fun game where you're not going to immediately kill it. It needs to be a scenario, really. Yeah, you've got to let it trample around. Yeah, you've got to let it do a bit of damage. Right? I think I think it, it's it's certainly not suited to scenario play. It can't move around the board very well if there's it's lots scenario of scenario play. Do you mean points match? I mean points match play because it can step totally over. Cool. It can step yes. over anything that's less lower than its legs. Half, half its height. Half its height. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but um, yeah, it just struggles to fit in gaps and things like that. Yeah, and think there's very easy ways of doing it, like going into woods yeah. where it can't go into and yeah. that sort of thing. So wh when you play with it, you really want to just set out really a pitched battle where it's more like the Pelennor Fields where it's just a, a bit of an open plain with a bit of rocks here and there, things like that. Can I ask you a question? <clears throat> yes. If there were 20 of them coming towards you, yes. and you had by this Models point... Models or in real life? No, real life. Okay. And you had by this point <clears throat> 4,000 ish riders with you, <laughs> would your preferred tactic be take them head on? Charge them? Yeah. Probably not. I think is that's that possibly not the stupidest <laughs> possible thing. Theoden. That's why Theoden that's a... gets zero will. <laughs> yeah. What is he thinking? My idea go around the back, <coughs> shoot him. Shoot him. Just keep running around. And it, you can see it coming in that glorious shot where the one yeah. went blah, boof, yeah. And like a thousand rover and die yeah. in seconds. Yeah. But it's not a clever move. No. Take a bit of, and then Gamma goes, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And everyone goes, head on. You mental. He's like, I'm, I'm going to be done in a few minutes, don't worry. <laughs> I might as well get some glory out of this. There was a conversation today, did you see this about gambling? What happens to gambling? Yes. Um, that he, he vanishes in the return case, even in the extended meant edition. meant to be an unboxing of a mummock and we're now <laughs> discussing. <laughs> it's about a mummock. Okay. And what happens to gambling? Yes. And you don't see we him. see him shooting at the mummock. Yep. And then you never see him again, you no. never see him in the end, and you don't see him die. No. And someone said, and I listened to it, and you can kind of hear it, that mm -hmm. the one that they go bring it down, bring it down, yeah. bring it down, shooting at it, and it comes down near Eowyn and um, Mary. Yeah. Apparently, just as it's coming down, you hear Theoden go, gambling! And I think you kind of can, but you also might hear someone go, blah, blah. Yeah. But it's kind of gambling, and the implication is it sits on gambling. Yeah. But he doesn't get a heroic death scene. No. So He's not held it. I think that might have been a added in um, audio cue to explain where he yeah. went. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Who knows? Um, maybe. maybe. I was going to say perhaps the actor just wasn't available, but I remember I seeing an interview where he said he was hoping for yeah. a kind of heroic death, and they just never filmed it. Yeah, he just vanishes. It would have been that. It's, you need to see. Yeah, it's ten seconds. He's right? been in it for long enough that I think you need yeah. to see him just. I mean, even if he just gets squashed, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's just you need to see him go. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's. They're cool though. Yeah. They're very very cool and they're very iconic. Yeah. And um, well done to you if you bring them to events. Yes. But they're, they're not something not different. They're not competitive, are they? No. Um, they're not a kind of... I mean, Dan, Dan's done all right with it, but his his approach is to use it... He used it alongside um, something like... It was a ring wraith on Fell Beast, a Mimic combination, yeah. without many troops for him to go back through. Mm. And he used the, the... I can't remember how exactly he did it. Um, Didn't someone at one point... It, oh, that was it. He'd hurl stuff to the Mimic to, to then go through. And didn't someone manage to... I heard a story about command it into the fell beast so it crushed oh, the fell really? beast or something like that. That would be brilliant. <laughs> but yeah, there you go. Yeah, so we hope that was a, a nice extension to the Fallen Realms week. It's pretty big unboxing, but yes. then it's a pretty big model. Yes. Um, yeah, go out and get yourself one. It's very, very cool. Anyway, as always, don't forget to um, comment, like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Support your hobby, hobby. and happy strategy, Belgium.